You'll find the score to The Hunt in issue 69 of Pianist magazine. Gerlitt is a lesser known German composer born in the early 19th century. This little piece of his is simplicity itself, certainly from a harmonic point of view. Two chords only is all that's needed. But before you assume it's easy peasy, there may be a few technical points worth considering. A piece like this needs animation and clear articulation. The phrasing needs to be precise and clean. Now, although the fingering indicates a third finger on that C melody note at the beginning, I actually prefer the second finger. The fingers then fall nicely on the melody notes coming up over the next few bars, especially at bar five, where the E's on the third beat fall under the fourth finger, generally acknowledged as the weaker finger, which should ensure these notes don't stick out. Now for articulation, try a comfortable hand motion. If you see my hand rests, on the key for the very first note. And then the C, the staccato C, is played by an upwards motion as if the second fingers propels the hand into the air. It's a good, in fact, to always have your hands resting on the keys before the note is played. The melody at bar five to seven is more effective if played a little detached, but not staccato. You can apply the same approach for the next section too. This time, I like to use the third instead of the fourth finger, indicating at the beginning of bar nine. The next part of the melody that passes from the left hand to the right hand use the same technique with each second note. This will be the first time for your left hand, so focus on it until it feels right. Then the final section from bar 29, again, I prefer to use the third finger instead of the fourth on the beginning of this phrase. The dynamic range indicated for this piece is very limited. Perhaps at the beginning of bar 17, drop the level to make more of the crescendo. Now, as far as the pedaling goes, I really don't think there's any need for it in this piece, so perhaps avoid it. Regards to the tempo, I think a good BPM or beats per minute to aim for is 110, but that's per bar. So every click on the metronome should be the start of a new bar. We normally indicated dot minim or dotted minim equals 110 BPM. To have a click on each crotchet beat would mean tripling the speed to 330 beats per minute. And that would neither be musically nor technically desirable. Whilst this little piece of Gerlitz is not exactly going to set the world on fire, it's important to look for the challenges in each piece and never underestimate the technical requirements. In fact, we mentioned the benefits of keeping your fingers close, if not touching the keys at all times. My piano teacher encouraged minimal movement in the arms, torso, and just about anything else other than the fingers and then the hands. Now, some pianists prefer to make these great arm gestures, lots of head swaying, etc. Well, whilst I'm sure this can help from the perception of a musical point of view, and perhaps from the visual performance point of view, as far as the audience is concerned, there's very little to suggest that these kind of movements help the articulation. If anything, this kind of movement may impede the smooth execution of certain phrases. So be very cautious with unnecessary body movements. 
Just try looking at videos of some of the world's most renowned concert pianists. Have a look on YouTube. Maurizio Pellini is sometimes motionless except from the shoulders down. There's a very famous video of Michelangeli and his controversial interpretation of the middle movement of Ravel's piano concerto. The camera shows a wonderful close-up of his hands occasionally lifting from the keys for a brief moment as if to breathe. Indeed, watching performances of the, the great pianists is inspiring, I feel. It really helps to appreciate the physical approach to playing the piano.